Okay, I know, this is a bit different for me. This is more of a Mad Watch Collector kind of video, but if you've got the full Metal G-Shocks in, how can you not review them? Today we're looking at the GMW B5000 and the GMW B2100D. And these are next level Casios. These are a whole different tier of Casio watches than I'm used to. So we're gonna be looking at the good, the bad, and the ugly about these watches, and I'll be giving some of my thoughts as well. If you're new here, Hi, my name is Brittany, and this channel is dedicated to the beauty and awesomeness of timepieces. This is my first time being hands-on with full metal G-Shocks, and these have been sent to me by the fabulous team over at Casio. I've had these in for about a month now, so a good old chunk of time to spend time with these, to get to know them, so I can properly review them. Before we get into the good, the bad, and the ugly, let's just make sure we're all singing off the same hymn sheet first. So this is the GMW B5000, or the Square G shock full metal and this is the gmw b2100 or the cassie oak full metal specification wise these two are the same the only differences are cosmetic so the case shape dimensions but with the case construction durability specifications they are the same these both have 200 meters of water resistance and all that modern g-shock functionality we're after so calendar settings the ability to set five alarms countdown timer shock resistant and world time these are both solar powered and can last about 20 22 months on full charge. So that's an A plus battery. Or should we say double A plus battery? Is this what we've come to, Brittany? Battery puns. <laughs> These are beefy, tough timepieces, but they are beautifully finished as well. So both have brushed bezels contrasted against polished surfaces. The sides have a combination of brushing and polishing, and the pushers are steel as well. One thing to note is that the glass is not sapphire, but rather mineral glass, which has some pros and cons, but more on that later. Something really cool about these is their accuracy. The multiband 6 automatically connects overnight, which gives you atomic accuracy. Looking at them individually, the octagonal full metal has a case size of 43.2 millimeters, a thickness of 13 mil, and a lug to lug of 49.3 millimeters. These dimensions sound big, and they are big, but G-Shocks are meant to wear on the larger side. They're not dressy, dainty watches. Here's this watch on my five and a half inch wrist versus my husband's seven inch wrist. I'm sized out of this one, like I always am with watches that I love, but I think James can only just pull it off. It's close, it does flare out a little bit too much at the end links, but I think he can wear this. One thing to note with the wearing experience, the end links do stick out from the case and they do not articulate. Now looking at the square full metal, once again, this one's just a little tiny bit too big for me, with there being a bit of a gap between my wrist and the end links, but it's absolutely perfect on my husband's seven inch wrist. I think for a seven inch wrist and above, these will be perfect. No little gaps or anything. The square has similar end lengths and they do protrude quite a bit. When accounting the end lengths in the lug to lug, the Cassio Oak measures 60.8 millimeters and the square 61.6 millimeters. So they're pretty large. Okay, there's a lot to love about these, and there's a reason why the Full Metal G-Shocks are so well-loved in the watch collecting community. They're beefy, rugged, hard-wearing, and there's something for everyone in these two models we have in today. If you prefer an Anna Digi display, or you like having the time displayed with hands, but also having the digital time read, it's gotta be the GMW B2100. Or if you want classic G-Shock full digital, it's the 5000D. Something I have to say is there's so much depth in the Cassie Oak dial really beautifully done. So these are kind of the next step up in the G-Shock catalog. You start out with the classic resin case models, but you can definitely feel the quality difference with the full metal. If you're used to wearing the classic resin G-Shocks, there is a weight difference. You will feel the weight and the heaviness. It's just the material being stainless steel. These are solid build quality, rugged, now looking at the functionality, these have all the modern G-Shock functions that you'd want. So your first screen is home. Then when you hit mode, so the bottom left button, the next screen is world time. Honestly, this screen scares me and I never use it. Then if you hit mode again, it is the alarm screen where you can set up to five alarms. Next is stopwatch and the next screen is countdown timer. 
If you then hit mode again, it takes you back to the home screen or the main screen. I don't know if I'm the only person who feels this way, but I find it terrifying setting a G-Shock from the watch. It's always hit this button three times and then this button once. That actually didn't sound that hard. <laughs> but a feature I've been using and loving is the Casio Watches app which is one of the Bluetooth features that comes in really handy. So if you download the app, do all the boring registration stuff, you can then pair your watch to your phone. Once you're connected, you can manage your timers, world timer, alarm, and setting your home time zone through the app. I really, really like this. It's a bit of a ball ache to initially set up and do all that annoying sign up stuff. I hated that part, but once you're through, it's golden. I use it all the time. I love the case on these. I'm a sucker for full metal G-Shocks. The bracelet has a lovely taper into the clasp. There is a micro adjustment on the clasp, but not on the fly. So to make micro adjustments, you just need to put a tool into the wee holes in the clasp and move it whichever way you'd like. I was gonna say I prefer on the fly adjustments, but I think all people prefer on the fly adjustment, but this is still great. So for the bad portion, we talk about things that are just objectively bad. Then in the ugly portion, we talk about things that I subjectively don't like. There's only one thing, objectively, kind of not desirable, and it's the choice of mineral glass over sapphire. Now, I'm, I'm a bit shaky on if this belongs in the bad portion because mineral glass does still have its place and there's a reason why they chose it over sapphire. So sapphire is the gold standard in watchmaking. It is harder, but that also makes it more brittle. The benefit of mineral glass is that it's not as brittle as sapphire and it can be coated to increase scratch resistance. It is quite cost effective as well. I see why they went with mineral glass, and it is a material that can be found on far more expensive watches, like the 11,000 pound Cartier Tank Louis. But my preference will always lean sapphire. Now this might be my shortest ugly section yet, because there's not a great deal that I dislike about these. But I do have three things to highlight here. Number one, my biggest problem is that I like them so freaking much, but I'm sized out of wearing them. I can wear the resin variation of both these models, but with the full metal end links, I'm sized out and it hurts my heart because I like these so much. If you have a smaller wrist, the square version is slightly better. It just looks that wee bit smaller. I think I can almost pull one of these off, but it's just not there. Hey guys, editing Brittany here, looking like a snack as always, I know calm down um what's that okay i got it so looking back over the b-rolls i've had a change of heart i don't think it's that i can almost pull these off i think i can pull these off looking at the b-roll seeing how it looks on my wrist i think it looks good i've had a change of heart i can pull this one off i can't pull off the octagonal one it is just that little bit too large for me but the square full metal let's go Second thing to know is these can feel quite heavy at first if you're not used to the weight, particularly at the head of the watch. It doesn't bother me as much because I'm used to wearing heavier watches, but that is something to bear in mind. And my third complaint would be the Cassie Oak just isn't the most legible. This is something that's quite subjective. I always prefer high legibility and contrasting colors so I can quickly look down and see the time. This Cassie Oak is a bit more stealth, which is aesthetically pretty cool, but it can take a couple seconds to read the time. Something I don't always share on here is how much I like the full metal Cassiokes, and I've liked them for a really long time. I've seen reviewers in the past say this watch has a bit of an identity problem. Like, is it supposed to be more of a luxury watch or is it a special occasions watch because it's quite expensive at $550? Or is it a tool watch or a beater watch? And I can't say I agree with people saying this watch has an identity crisis. It's a sporty and premium G-Shock but it is still a G-Shock. I think all the best watches are a combination of things. They're elegant, but still sporty and rugged. The full metal G-Shocks are kind of the best embodiment of a true hard-wearing sports watch. This is what Rolex have lost, and this is what brands like AP have lost as they go down the more premium luxury route. Well, this is exactly what a stainless steel sports watch should be. I'm a big fan. I really like these. 
Anyways, did I miss anything big? What do you think to these? Let me know in those comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let's thank the gorgeous, fabulous, wonderful Pope to your patrons. I'm not sure what to do at the end anymore because my singing's not great, but I kind of love singing. Should we? We're gonna, we're gonna go for singing. Ooh, ooh, thank you, Pope to your patrons. Ooh, ooh, newest Pope to patrons. I'm sorry I said your names wrong in the last video. Ooh, ooh, they were kind of tricky to say, but I love you. Thank you, Pope to patrons. Thank you, all to your patrons.